All right, for our last full session, uh, I get to play moderator. Uh, and I have way too much practice at that doing standards, so this is going to be fun. Uh, so I'm going to, our topic for today is PDF 2.0 and the future of PDF. Uh, so if our panelists could introduce themselves before I start harassing them, that would be great. Okay, so I'm Duff Johnson, the Executive Director of the PDF Association and Project Leader for ISO 32000. I am Matt Kuznicki, the CTO at Data Logics. I am Francois Fernandez, and I am the chairman of the PDF Competence Center, working for the Solutions. <coughs> I'm Bruno Lovasi from Einstein. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. So uh, I'll get things started, and we do have uh, Joel, who's officially volunteered to run the microphone. So uh, please do feel free to raise your hands and uh, let us know your back questions, because that will be much more interesting. All right, so um, Duff, during his last, se last session, actually posed an interesting question that I hadn't thought to ask the panel, uh, but I thought it was actually a really good one. So this is all your fault, so you can answer it first. Which is, um, should users actually care that we're doing uh, 32,000 part two of PDF 2.0, or is this really just for developers? Yeah, it is a good question, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure that users really should care. Um, but it seems to me that the more we ask users to care about the arcana of numbers and versions and conformance levels, they lose interest. Um, they, you know, they, 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 this is a world where we're moving to document, you know, applications that don't even have documentation. You, know, you wave your mouse over a question mark, and you're supposed to get all the information you need to use the thing successfully. Um, I don't. You know, well, it's my opinion that one of the big problems we have with PDFA, with adoption of PDFA, were the, were the parts, the conformance levels, and <coughs> users, really any time anybody, any user had any opinion for me about PDFA, it was why is it so damn complicated? Um, so PDF 2.0 is liable not to be helpful, it seems to me, from the point of view of end users necessarily. I probably prefer that all they saw were new features, new capabilities that emerged from that, that emerged from uh, application of the specification. Uh, now, having said that, if um, if PDF 2.0, because 2 is better than 1, right, comes later, if it turns out that that's useful from a marketing point of view, I, I'd be very happy to be overruled in that regard. But from my point, from I guess my, my the main point that I would make here is that so much of the value PDF adheres in the idea that it's a static thing, that it's this very, very solid, stable entity. And I would worry if we started introducing too many ideas that it is uh, on the move and changing in ways that users would, would get too excited about, perhaps in a negative sense. Thank you, Matt. So, so I'm that's my, oh, oh, did you want to respond to that, Phil? Question to, to add to that. I know I, I'm pretty sure, it's been a while since I was in the code, but I think the, when I was in the code, um, PDF 2.0, if we saw a file like that, would break reader. And it, in other words, it, it assumed it had an understanding of it and it understood everything about one, and maybe it could support later versions of things, and there were later versions there, but 2.0 kind of meant an incompatible release um, in the code base. What was the motive? Is that your understanding of what viewers are supposed to do? And Because it seems to me that would impact users. Duff, you're the, uh, the project leader. I'll let you take, get, take this one. Uh, and, and, before, uh, and, and, and just in case anyone's curious, uh, I actually fixed that in Acrobat 9. So uh, versions of 9 and later actually recognized 2.0. Okay. So, but, but you were right, it used to do that. But it's still a relevant question because yeah. we're not the only Adobe's are yeah, you're not, not the, the only implementation, right? Yeah, it's still, it's so if I'm correct in understanding, you're saying that right at the outset of the file it says, I'm, I am, I'm a PDF 2.0, right? And you're saying it's going to break certain they're expecting a, a different number. A the, one point point the point of the major version was a compatible, incompatible change, right? And that was the original motivation for breaking. You know, for breaking it, we saw that. Well, that's a choice. A choice, though. I mean, I mean, I mean. Uh, I suppose the other thing you could say was that we're locked into 1.8, and then 1.9, and then 1.91, and so on and so forth, and never get to 2.0 unless we're going to break version compatibility. So it, it, I guess it sounds like you're sort of suggesting if you're going to go to 2.0, do all the, do whatever version, do whatever breaking you're going to do now and suck it up. 
Well, although I looked at I looked at your your definition of 2.0, and it didn't strike me that there was a lot of um, incompatible stuff in there. Right, newer there's not intended to be. Right, so it didn't strike me that it qualified quite yet for a major version change. A fair, a fair point. And uh, was I the one that decided to call it 2.0 instead of 1.8? No, I actually <laughs> did. Francois, yeah. he may be able to just just to have a, a, a view from a, another viewer, um, um, I basically started my implementation like you said. I will accept anything that is starting with PDF dash one, and anything else will be non accepted. Uh, the truth is that in many cases, um, if you're doing your implementation based on PDF 1.4, which is the thing that we have done due to the fact that PDF 8 was based on that, there are a lot of changes in both minor versions which should not break existing implementations, but in fact do. So it is pretty fair now to go ahead and use a major version number, and it's probably not only about features that um, kind of make the, the, the new version number uh, required, but the way how that specification is going to be designed and to be developed. I think it is a pretty new game on how the whole process is going on. And due to the fact that there have, have seen so, so many corrections, um, I think having PDF 2.0 encourages more people to extensively uh, look at that specification and encourages them to look in, uh, deep inside it. And it is pretty worthwhile. It's not, perhaps not um, from a point of view regarding the features. Yes, let me also just say that the standards committee has given the vendor community plenty of time to uh, get used to the fact that there will be a PDF 2.0. At least a, a couple months, yes. <laughs> so the original question was: uh, Should end users care rather than developers? Um, so back on topic. <laughs> um, so Leonard has already stated that uh, PDF uh, 1.7 or ISO 32001 doesn't disappear, and that ISO 32002 doesn't replace. ISO 32001. That's true in general, but there are specific cases where that's not true. Digital signatures. If you look at digital signatures, there's a lot of stuff in uh, Dash 1 that is considered by many governments as no longer desirable. So that's where PDF 2.0 solves a couple of things. Um, and, well, not as, as uh, it's important, but not, not really breaking, but um, that PDF has also dramatically improved. So that's 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 the two topics where I think that end users should care about. Okay, we have a question. So actually, I'm so, going to use that. So, so sorry, going along with that, shouldn't there be a marketing or branding change of PDF going along with the 2.0 change? In other words, the icon or some other visual representation that shows up in um, operating systems or on the web or things like that have a 2.0 or some other thing to let the user know, hey, this is the newer version of, Act of PDF. And you may run into a problem with Reader or Foxit or some other browser, some other tooling. You need to make sure that you're new, you need to get the 2.0 version that's going to be compatible with this, which may also still read the old stuff just fine. You know, me from a, from a corporate, I'm going to be getting calls from people going out to the web going, well, here's the file, it's not working. And I'm going, oh, lots of PDF 2.0, you need to go get the 2.0 version of the, uh, of the reader for that. Yeah, then we should have done this for 1.5 already because uh, compressed uh, cross reference streams and compressed objects, that was really what broke a lot of uh, what people said, well, hey, I, I can't process this file, I can't open this file. You're right, and you're right, that should have been done, but that doesn't give you the license to not do it this time. Yeah, yeah but that, that's, 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 my example was meant to say, hey, maybe we need this because we've been into, into that, we've been into that situation already. As far as I know, there's no easy way. What you ideally like is an icon 
that showed a different icon for the 2.0 file. Right, and, and uh, the 1.0 file would show a different icon. Right? I don't know any easy way to do that on, the, on, on, on some of these platforms. Uh, and so everything is either going to show up as 2.0 because your viewer supports 2.0, right? Or, um, or your, and then, and then you really can't tell the difference between the file and one or the other. It'd be nice if we had a way from on a file by file level to do it, but we can't. Yeah. If, if you had an extension, you could put an additional some indicator on there, like like Dropbox does. You know, it puts a little icon that's been synchronized or not synchronized. You speak in the microphone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, there there are extensions to the operating system that let you decorate an icon. So you'd have to have an extension to do it. Yeah. Anybody else want to comment on Doug's question? Or do you just want to leave it on the floor and we'll move on? <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I felt strongly about the icon for many years. I've actually proposed to various companies, I won't name right now, that they consider uh, using or, or, or advocating or getting behind a, a project to create a, a fully generic uh, icon for PDF, but actually probably not even necessarily an icon, but just primitives, primitive graphics that would be usable in any kind of icon, and you know, and guidance about how that might use, or guidance about color and so on, uh, to remove or to neutralize the idea so that it, everybody's not bamboozled with different icons for different, P, different PDF icons everywhere they go. And it's a bit of a different subject for PDF 2.0, though, but I, I myself feel that that would be a major improvement to to uh, people's understanding of PDF and the idea that they the idea they have that it's a very solid, stable thing. It wasn't if it was branded very neutrally. Yep. Uh, just following up on planning, you know, smooth transition for users. Um, I know, I believe you said that Microsoft was your co-chair for the committee. Um, but has, is there a conversation involved from, say? Other large unnamed entities uh, like the Fruit Company and other PG, who make these generic viewers on mobile devices and lots of other places that they plan to be ready for 2.0 when it comes out. I await such signals with great interest. <laughs> <laughs> we have a slide. We got one over here. Just a comment. I mean, there is a mechanism for marking icons like. Source control systems do that. I don't know if it's a good idea to no, so some things checked in <coughs> or whatever. I don't know if it would be a good idea to modify an icon to say it's 2.0. All right, let me, uh, I'll throw another question out. I'll wait to see if there's more come from the floor. So, uh, and this actually goes to something Bruno uh, started commenting earlier about some things that were interesting or important to make, not to miss, maybe him, maybe his users. Um, but let me toast to the panel, and Matt, you get to start to shoot the microphone. What is your favorite and least favorite um, change between uh, part one and part two, or 1.7 and 2.0? And you only get one of each. Just, oh. So you have to limit it, one favorite, one not favorite. So I'm going to answer a slightly different question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say my favorite set of changes is actually all the work that the committee and the community has put into the clarification of the specification and removing ambiguity and loose ends and those questions for interpretation. It really tightens up PDF and brings it to something that is easier and to reproduce reliably across different implementations. As far as my least favorite change goes, I'm not going to comment on that. Huh? That's well. Well, um, I will be moving a little bit. Sorry, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> 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 My most favorite change was actually deprecating um, XFA. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my personal least favorite change is, and I've been arguing about that, and I'm still not convinced, but it's, it's a, a, a good idea, is the unencrypted grant for document, solely because I hate encryption so badly that we should remove it completely from the specification. Interesting. 
that might, well, I don't know if the change will be accepted, so it could be my most favorite or the least favorite change. Um, one of the things that is still in uh, the digital, digital signatures um, section is um, usage rights, so you are uh, the stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't, that's, that's, it uses digital signatures, but it doesn't belong in digital signatures in a digital signatures uh, section and it has like that I, I always left that I didn't read that didn't comment on it uh, because I thought it would disappear but uh, now I've read it and it says things as um, in previous versions of PDF processor and so that's like what's this about and then you see that it's it's, it's like a, a copy and re a delete and replace from in previous versions of Acrobat. So um, I think if this goes away, it's the best change. If this stays, it's the worst, uh, well, no change. <laughs> now see, I, well, we passed the mic down. I thought you were actually going to vote for the one, for the one feature you were very instrumental in including, inline image links. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. What about that one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I just want to, and I say it only to point out that this, a lot of these things, a lot of the things you saw Duff mention, came from people you know, in this room and from many other subject matter experts around the world. And it's really how things have gotten done. Um, so you know, Bruno should get credit for, and, and it, it, you know, many of you, for so the work you've done in individual in, things. Inline images, they, they are a pain if you process them because they have like an end sequence with white space EI and image white space, but this white space EI white, uh, white space can be part of the data too. So you never know when an in inline image ends. And so just by adding one extra item to the dictionary saying the length of the, the data is that long, that, that, that should save a lot of like uh, <laughs> pains of developers. <coughs> Well, I'm going to go to Sanford's been waiting, and I don't really care what Duff has to say right now, so. Um, <laughs> I'm going to come back to you. I got another question for you. Don't worry. This is for now. I'm holy. Oh, so the green. <laughs> Thank you, Sanford. I appreciate you taking that off my uh... I'm curious about this uh, concept that you mentioned, the processor, by which I guess we can have you kind of processor. But I guess the other processor Or printer. Or printer, okay. That implements a feature must implement that feature completely. I guess that's what you said. So I'm curious about how, how that might play out, for example, in the area of the security handler, where there's, uh, as part of the requirement, that uh, a processor implement the standard security handler. And in that same section of the spec, there's a description of other security handlers and support for other security handlers. So, and there are probably other things like that. So can you give some examples of what it means that uh, a processor has to implement a complete uh, item in the spec, in particular with respect to the crew company and things like security handlers, which are currently not supported at all other than the uh, uh, standard one, the password one? So security is, is not an area of my specific expertise. And and I have no doubt that you're right, that there would be uh, there would be select areas where the question would not be easy to answer. And to the extent that's the case, that's problematic. And so we would, and, and if it's deep, we certainly, we, we ask people to do the right thing with uh, any given feature, but if, if doing the right thing is, is, is patently unclear, then that's actually something we need to look at and, and add further clarifying, perhaps informative language to the document. That would, that would help get, provide the necessary guidance in these cases. That, that's not a good situation if we have it. Um, and, and, and so it's, it's harder for me to speak to the particulars of the, of the example that you offered because, as you say, it's not a, a, an area in which I'm particularly expert. And so if we take an area um, such as tag PDF, something I know a little bit more about, the, um, the, uh, It's it's fairly it's fairly unambiguous, I suppose you could say that, that uh, those who would have the folks who would have to implement tag PDF would have to consider all of the various standard structure types, all of the various attributes, and so on. And 
I mean, this is perhaps not a good example of what you're referring to because in, when I'm thinking about this, I'm, I'm not coming up with a, with a natural place where I want them to stop, or I would say it's okay to stop and not go any further. You know, uh, is it okay to implement? Uh, but I mean, one example might be so. For example, uh, there are two kinds of heading structure elements in, in PDF. There's uh, enumerated ones, H1, H2, H3, and then there's H, which is the standard structure type we might use for so-called strongly structured documents. Now, in truth, there are almost nobody knows to have strongly structured documents in the world. Um, they can only be realistically produced by very by implementations that are. Uh, they could be produced by many implementations, so there's very little reason to produce them, and there's not any more reason in PDF 2.0 than there was in, in PDF 1.7. So an implementer might look at that and say, "Hey, I'm I'm perfectly willing to implement the enumerated headings, but why would I bother with this H thing? What am I supposed to do with it?" Um, I'm not, I'm not happy that a developer might make this choice, even though I might very well understand it, um, and it's certainly, and I'm, and I think I'm probably right in saying, well, we, if we were giving out medals for conformance with the specification, you're not going to get one because you didn't support, you, you claim to support tag PDF, and here's a standard structure element you decided not to support. So I, it's impossible for me to be too impressed with that, and 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 just to even perhaps sanction them for it, much as it is a small feature. You know, this is a perennial difficulty when we, we do, our users use our, our, our document, and therefore our, our documents, our specifications for so many different things. It's, <coughs> it's unlike a lot of other uh, kinds of uh, things in the software world. Uh, there, there are cases where those uh, page headers or footers or, or document pagination might be a crucial value to this or that uh, implementation or, user, or users. And so, awarding like a you know awarding a certificate for full implementation of X feature without full implementation of that feature is is you know, it's got some serious concerns about that. That said, I am I'm not at all comfortable that there. Are, I, I entirely agree with you that I'm sure there are parts of the spec where there's no decent answer to the question what does full implementation of this feature mean, and it would be uh, I think a very valuable exercise for the for the ISO committee to make sure that we identify those and then attempt to find, you know, find ways to explain our way around those with some with some additional informative text. Would you like to send in some comments? We would like to see them. So, so Duff, would a would a proper handling of the page zero capability deal with a security handling? Why would that be a minimum a that, minimum uh, implementation? That's, that's actually, actually the new one in the, the new encrypted. encrypted. Uh, payload wrapper that Doc mentioned earlier is a, is a, is a, is a standard, standardization of payload. Okay. Chuck, any questions? Yeah. Does anybody else want to answer standard question? Yeah. I, I, just to follow up on that, uh, the, the notion that you know, a processor can be PDF 2.0 compliant while sk skipping some sections makes sense if you start to think of a processor as more than just a viewer. So in other words, if, if my car radio can read aloud PDFs, what does it mean for that to support ICC color? Great example. So this is, was really a, a, a compromise to acknowledge that for some processors, some concepts that are enumerated by PDF, they may need to be handled in some manner but they may not be handled in, in a manner that is any greater than just ignoring them and making sure that the underlying processing, the underlying meaning and, and semantics is, is still preserved for the situation that makes sense for that processor at that time. So I'd just like to build on Bruno's least favorite feature, of, which is the ubiquity rights dictionary. And the, and for any of you that don't know, I was the product manager for Reader Extensions for most of his life. Now that Acrobat Reader is basically giving all those things away and not honoring the ubiquity rights, would it make sense actually just to take that out of the PDF 2.0 spec? I like the answer to that one. I thought that was the whole point of my being moderator. I think the answer. Um, 
Uh, if, if somebody suggests that at the meeting in Basel, I am certainly willing to discuss that as a possibility. Do I have to fly to Basel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know actually we will have dialing capabilities available for those not able to do Thank you. Okay. Uh, have, oh, I got a question from the floor up here. Sorry? I'm kind of curious to see what Bruno is saying. Yeah, I, I put it on the comments for the meeting here in April, and then it looked like snowed under. It was forgotten, so I put it again in the comments. Excellent. Let's remove it. <laughs> but but Joel still has to come off. I, I, I didn't want to fight over it, so. <laughs> we didn't have to fight over it. All right, uh, Gary, you're up. Uh, just as an aside, has any viewer ever fully implemented transparency? Uh, that's not really a question. But, but I wanted to ask about deprecation, uh, opportunity, and hazard. What are vendors thinking of doing uh, as far as perhaps removing support for deprecated features? And I'm especially interested in, of course, what Acrobat will do with the, its later versions. You guys are it's, 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 it's a good question. But, uh, <laughs> I don't think that any one of well, us is actually working for it. No, no, but, but, but well, I'll, 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 I'll make the deal. You guys, if, 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 well, let me, I'll, I'll give you answer that one, but I'll give you answer the second half. But I would appreciate the panelists, and it could be any one of you, would explain the official definition of deprecation. It's come up in other sessions, but it would be good to reiterate here because the official definition as defined in the standard is relevant to the answer to the question. All right, so a, a deprecated feature in, in PDF 2.0 means that a writer of a PDF 2.0 file shall not write said feature. It's, don't do it. But a reader, a processor of a PDF 2.0 file should perhaps expect that that feature. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. 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 Thank you. So a, a reader or processor of a PDF 2.0 file should be prepared to encounter a deprecated feature, and it may handle that feature in a manner of its choosing, particularly by ignoring it. However, if it's not going to ignore it, it should process it as defined <coughs> in the PDF 2.0 specification. No, just hand me the. What do you mean by handle it if it's deprecated? Degrade gracefully? I mean, you may handle it like as a smack or. Um, I, uh, handle, handle as in any. It, handle as in really any way it wants. Um, the it, the word is actually clear, but. Think of it this way, that we left in all the descriptions. So part of why your know, was commented earlier that I wonder why the spec is still so large. All of the features that are marked deprecated are still in there. Everything about that feature is still in there. It just has the word deprecated after it. Okay. So to pick um, uh, prox sets, okay. prox sets are deprecated. All the information about what they are, where to find them, what to do with them, still in the spec. A viewer can then go ahead and see them, and if it wants to use a prop set, it can certainly do so, and it's free to do so. But in the same vein, because it's deprecated, a viewer can ignore them completely, and both are perfectly valid and equal operations. Yeah, it's, it's not deprecated, it's just uh, something that disappeared. Um, so in the previous version, there was like a limitation that a document could be 14,400 <coughs> by 14,400 uh, user units. And if you created a document that was larger, you could see it when you opened it in the viewer of the fruit company, 
You could see it in Foxit, you could see it in Nitro, but you couldn't see it in Adobe Reader because you, you saw a blank page then. So we, we uh, drew an exception. As soon as somebody creates a document that is larger than 42,400 by 42,400, then we threw an exception saying this, this is too large a canvas. So we can now remove this because that's no longer in, 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 uh, in uh, the spec. There's, there's no limitation. And my question is, uh, will Adobe Reader show, uh, render documents that are larger? I swear or I'm getting on my fireproof basket. <laughs> <laughs> will we see a No, no, no. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take Gary's question. It's a lot safer. Um, <laughs> Oh, good, Phil's left. I'm even more safe. Um, no, the answer to the question, I mean, the, the simple answer, actually, for both of you is that once PDF 2.0 is ratified, becomes an official standard, then Adobe will officially announce what we plan to do with respect to it. And the short, that's the politically correct, proper answer. Obviously, as we have done with every other release of PDF and every other PDF standard, we will support it as is best and proper for our customer base. And right now, that is the most complete answer I'm going to give you. Um, but I, 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 will, I, will put on, I will put out on the floor that one of the advantages that we actually have with PDF 2.0 that we never had with all of the previous releases is we are now on equal footing with every other viewer, which means that we are no longer required to implement every feature that's in the specification. In the past, we'd implement it, then we'd spec it, so we sort of didn't really have a choice. Now, it is a purely democratic society that defines the standard and a purely democratic process, or I would actually say a market-driven process, to decide what functionality gets incorporated. And to be honest, that is probably how we will make that decision. But no public announcements of what we're doing or not doing until the standard is complete. Because as you heard, there's still 400 more comments, and Bruno wants to throw some more stuff out, and I'm sure there are people, I say, I know there are people who want to add new things, so who knows. Um, all right, we have more, another question on the floor? Yeah, Matt. Um, yeah, I'm not taking any more questions. Ask them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't really a question. It was just kind of an observation. So, so is that kind of an analogous to the browser uh, companies that uh, they've got the standard and then they choose to, to uh, implement certain features that they want to, that kind of thing, and then the market forces decide? Is that, is that where it's going? Uh, speaking as the, uh, I, uh, you know, I previously disclosed my ambitions to be the world's PDF policeman. <laughs> you have my vote. <laughs> okay, very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, so the the, the, um, the browsers, you know, the, there's browsers are taking over more and more of PDF viewing, and yet they do very very little about PDF other than render it. So I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying with that they're going to improve that state of affairs. Uh, I think there's plenty of, I don't think the, the marketplace knows that they need more support than the browsers are willing to deliver. I don't think they know who to yell at. I get phone calls from large companies, uh, a, a, a VP, I, I can't say who I suppose, but uh, a VP of a very, very large company that makes printers and scanners and this and that and the other thing is uh, desperate for some sort of answer because he, he, his customers have workflows that are breaking left and right uh, on account of the fact that, that uh, the users are now cracking up with a PDF in a, in a browser on iOS or whatever, not getting what they expected that they've always seen before. And they assume, uh, they assume that, that uh, something's wrong, but they don't really don't know who to talk to about it. Uh, will market pressure bring the browsers closer to implementing PDF properly? I hope so. It's part of my job to try and make it so. Uh, but I am uh, uh, certainly can't do it alone. And I think uh, we have to find the right kind of lever that moves those folks. The one thing I am convinced of is once one of them does it, the others will as well. And we have time. Well, it's 
Start the dot, but according to the schedule, we're slightly over, so I'm going to go for one last question. That's okay. Did you guys want to comment on that same question before I move on? Yeah. I think it's uh, that pressure does really need to come from the market as well as the implementer, uh, the, uh, the vendor community. A PDF is just such a such a flexible format, which is both really its benefit and in a way it's it's really its drawback that there's so much one can express in it that it may at this point be unrealistic to expect a full and complete implementation of everything out of any one vendor in a method that the world will agree is right and proper. And I got our last question. Yeah, just Make it a good one. <laughs> Just one com uh, comment. Uh, I spent the time to look at the, the PDF, uh, PDF to know uh, new features. Uh, some of uh, I understand why, uh, but some of I don't. I'm pretty sure you guys uh, have some of, you know, try to uh, fix some of real challenge. Um, so I'm wondering the, uh, you know, PDF to know, can we have some of the use case? Or what, what, what the really challenge you try to fix in order to you bring this a new idea, new feature and stuff? Mm -hmm. um, you should look at P PDF, PDF specification, PDF 2.0 in particular from my point of view to be um, an enabling technology. So there are many, many, many influences from all the <coughs> other uh, um, committees around it. For example, the PDFA co uh, com uh, committee has a lot of influence, and the PDFE committee too, and so on. PDFUA has been pretty, uh, pretty active. So it's pretty hard to identify exactly all use cases from my point of view. Um, PDF is meant to be, or the current state of the specification, is meant to be an enabling technology for all those other specialized versions of the PDF. If you're focusing on a specific target market, um, I'd say, that they, it will be making their lives easier. So probably the use cases are just hidden in those specifications around. Yeah, so uh, if you go to the committee meetings, most of the people who go to the ISO 32000 meetings also are members of the PDFA, PDFUA, and you have to see ISO 32000 as the foundation, as like the, the, the cleaned up foundation that allows the other specs to build on top of it. Well, it, I think uh, it, it's certainly the case that for some of these new features, we, in, in general, if for every feature there's supposed to be, there is in most cases, uh, a paragraph or so of informative text or a note that suggests use case, right? And in, in the cases where we don't have such language, we should. So if you if you if you find something that you say to yourself, there's no conceivable explanation here for what this is good for, say so, right? And an informative text is relatively easy for us to add at this point. So really, these are the, this is the kind of input that we would need. I think uh, it would be very useful for us in the committee. We can say, yeah, you know what? didn't explain anything about what we intended to this thing to be for, and that would be a very valuable input. All right, then, uh, gentlemen, you're relieved of your panel ship, and uh, so please let's thank the panel for their... Uh,